Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And today uh, is a very special lesson concerning, amen, our choice power. Someone say, I have choice power. I have choice power. And I'm going to help you on this, this morning because when you have choice power, uh, there's something that takes place, amen. Choice power makes you move into the direction of your purpose. Now, watch this here, amen. The direction of your purpose should not be, amen, anything. It must be chosen. Praise God. See, the Lord, amen, put before us. I want to go, if you would, to Deuteronomy, amen, 30 and 19. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And put that on the board if you would. All right? Now, again, remember here again, um, there's something that God has given every man, and it's called a brain. Amen. Amen. And the reason why he gave us a brain, because he wants us to use it. Yes. Now, he said in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. And I've set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that thou and thy seed may live. Amen. Choose what? So now the Lord said, I set before you, it's up to you to choose your destiny. Amen. People say, well, life has thrown me a bad hand. No, no, sometimes we're choosing a bad hand. You have to learn how to resist the devil and he'll flee. Because negativity will come your way. Problems will come your way, but you have to know how to fight. This is why the Lord said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks and the strategies of the devil. Now, the, the, the problem with a lot of people to understand that we have too many Christians who run from problems rather than face the problem. God doesn't give you equipment. He said, listen, I've given you running shoes. No, he gave you the whole arm of God. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible says here, when you see trouble, fly and run home. No, no. He said, stand. Haven't done all the stand. David did not run from Goliath. He faced his giant. And let me tell you something here now. Sometimes you can get away from certain things, but sometimes you got to face that giant. Amen. Amen. Somebody lift up your hand and say, Devil, Devil. come on with it. On with it. See, because you, you got to be prepared. Amen. The devil should be afraid of you and not you afraid of the devil. Amen. Let me go in here. First of all, amen. We have to understand that God has given us a mind, and through scientific uh, uh, teaching, and studies, they have found that the mind can be transformed. Yes. The mind can be changed. Otherwise, people say, well, you know what? If things are like this, they found out that people who had strokes can do better. Amen. They found out people who had, amen, uh, brain tr uh, traumas can do better. Yes. See, a long time they sign people off. They say, well, this is it. You're finished for life. But they found out people can regain their... Their, their brain uh, 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 attributes if they study how to use it. Amen, amen. amen somebody. Amen. Now, I'm going to show you here something on today. Amen. First of all, we've got to understand here, your, your brain deals with your behavior. You know that. Amen. amen. Otherwise, really, the truth is about psychology. Psychology is the study of behavior. But where do behavior come from? Behavior comes from what we think. Now, I want you to hear this very carefully. The truth is, when you're a child of God, you're not caught with the bi bi uh, biological elements of your parents. When you are born again, you have now the new creature after Jesus Christ. Amen. So therefore, if my mom and dad were drug addicts or alcoholics, I don't have to become that. If they were poor and they never had nothing, I don't have to become that. I know why? Because I changed my mindset. Amen. You got that? When you change your mindset, you do better. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. Now watch this. Here. So remember here again, your mind is the most powerful thing in this universe that God has given you. You almost want you to see that. Your mind, that's what changes life. I, choose, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day. And I set before you what? Life and death, blessing and cursings. He said, choose what? Choose what? Life. Choose what? Life. So you got to choose life. I made up my mind, I'd rather have a good life. Yes. Somebody said, good life is coming my way. 
Come on, say, matter of fact, matter of fact I receive it now. Because your mind, again, is the most powerful thing in the universe after God. The next thing is this here, your mind. All right, watch this here. Your mind has one foot in the door and your spirit one foot in the body. See that? Your mindset changes your whole atmosphere. Now, if you keep your mind, that you ever hear people say here, your mind is in the gutter. Because they're thinking wrong thoughts, right? And then in another, it was the same years ago, a mind is a terrible thing, see? Because the mind sets your atmosphere. Amen? Your mind is in control of your body. Your body is not in control of your mind. What you do in your mind controls your body. You got that? So you got to recognize that your mind is stronger than the body. But now, remember here, mind is over matters. So you got to know how to develop yourself to have your mind to handle. Here's the thing. If you feel sick, your mind can make you well. Amen. You, you know that. Yeah. If you are poor, your mind can make you rich. Because you will think rich and become what you think. You got that? Notice here. When you think, you build thoughts. What I do? All right. Now, these thoughts become um, physical substances in your brain. When you start thinking, it has, see, your brain deals with neurological things. So once you start thinking, your brain, your brain starts taking on those elements, those substances. I cannot be poor. I cannot be sick. I cannot be down. I cannot be depressed. Because you know why? The substances are growing in your mind. And all of a sudden, things are changing. You got that? Now, watch this here. Go to Proverbs, if you would. Amen. 23 and 7. Proverbs 23 and 7. So I'm getting my mind together. I'm getting some, I'm thinking differently. Amen? Amen. See, even right now, see a lot when you got a little. Y'all yes. Yes. missed that right there. Somebody say, I see a lot, even when I got a little. So you, you see, you got to think. Now watch this here. When God told Abraham, he said, leave your father and mother. He, when he left there, he had nothing. But his mindset received the word of God. When you receive the word of God, it's a seed. You got that? It's, it's a what? A seed. See, because remember here, everything God did, he planted it. And so once you get a seed, a seed germinates and begins to grow. You got that? What does it say in Proverbs 23? For as he thinketh. Now, how do you think with your mind? See, as he thinketh in his, so is he. So, see, there it is. As you think in your mind, things change. Are you listening? All right. Good thinking. Somebody said good thinking. Good choices. Healthy thoughts. Toxic thinking. Toxic choices. Toxic thoughts. See, because if you're toxic, you start bringing those negatives to you. Because it, 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 it draws to you for some reason. Like fear, I was saying the other day when I, um, some time ago, I remember seeing a dog passing. And I remember my friends just went on through. And I was so scared. They said, that dog ain't going to I was so scared the dog came to me. All my friends went through, but he came to me. You know why? I drew toxic feelings. And he smelled them. The devil can smell fear. Amen? That's why you have to understand, don't let the devil, amen, sniff you out and find that there's fear in you. There's no fear in you because God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. If God has not given you the spirit of fear, where did it come from? It has to be the devil. There are only two forces of power, that's Satan and God. If God has not given you the spirit of fear, it must come from the devil. If evil didn't come from God, it must come from the devil. You got that? So watch this a little bit further. So now remember here again, whether you know or not, in your neuro neurological thinking, your brain every day wakes up with a new cell. And folk don't even know that. Your brain thinks there's a new cell that grows in your brain every day. 
So now, no matter what, well, you understand that was my cousin and my aunt and my mom and all of them had dementia and short, no, 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 it don't make a difference. What did God say? Were you created, you were born by your mother and dad, but you were created after Jesus Christ. If any man be in Christ, God help us here. He's a new creature. And I understand my point. When Jesus walked this earth, he was sinless and pure. His body was pure. His heart was pure. Jesus had no diseases. So if I'm born after Jesus Christ, I can receive him as my real father. I got a biological father, but I got a spiritual father in whom I'm made new as a creature. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, I'm made new. So understand my point. The next thing that God deals with is this. When we talk about here transformation, and that's a powerful word. You know here that the word trans mean, uh, implies movement, right? So watch this here. Look at the things we talk about transformation. Uh, to transact something is to carry or to accomplish. You're transacting, right? Uh, to transcend something is to rise above in excellence. To make a transcript is a copy made from original copy. To transfer is to carry uh, 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 or cause something to pass from one person to another, another place, transfer. To transfigure is a change in outward form or appearance. To transfix is uh, to, uh, uh, not to, put it this way, to transfix is to be uh, astonished with something, in a uh, wonder or astonishment, all right? To tra transfuse is to pour out as a liquid from one vessel to another. Okay. To transgress is to break the, uh, the bounds of a company or law. Right. To transport is to, to carry people or goods from one place to another. To transplant is to remove or implant something to another place. Transparent is to see through things easily. All right? So now, here we said all those trans, but then God says, but transform. Huh? Because when we transform now, we have a different form or a different change of character. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. So the thing is here, and that's the thing he said in Romans 12 and 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you transform, you alter your change. You make a new movement. You are now a different person, and your mind has a different onset. Some of us say think. And I want the church to get to that level. Let's go to Numbers 13, if you would. In Numbers 13, amen, the Lord was trying to teach the children of Israel how to become giants. When you see a giant, you become bigger than the giant. Amen. Now, I said before that, amen, when the Bible says here, you are more than conquerors. Remember here, a conqueror can conquer certain conquests. Okay. But more than a conqueror means you make the devil a slave. Oh, amen. amen. A devil is a slave to your conquering anointing because you ain't just a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Y'all got that? Amen. Turn there and say, I'm not just a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. That means you make the devil fearful of you. You make him your slave. Because he recognized that when you step in the palace, the giant got to die. I want to ask the church today, what is the giant in your life that's keeping you fearful? Amen. A giant of people, the giant of uh, monies, the giant of, of, of uh, hearsay, the giant of uh, this depression. What is the giant? Giant of people who don't understand you. The giant of you going through situations where you can't find the right relationship. What is your giant? It's time to defeat those giants and get what you want from God. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Remember here, amen. Let's go further here. Let's go to Numbers 13. And let's read in verse 1, if you would. Numbers 13 and 1. I want to transform my mind and keep it transformed. Amen? Go there, if you would. Numbers 13. I hope you have your Bibles if not look on the board here with us. Now, y'all know the story about the 12 spies, right? Yeah. The Lord had seen... See, it's something about God. He sees something in us. 
that we don't see in ourselves. That's why the Lord says don't fear. You know why? Because why are you fearing when your life is already planned? You can fear and cry about right now I have the place I want to stay at. And then five more years you didn't word yourself out or had your heart attack. But then you live in their palace. <laughs> you know, because see, it's already, it's already ordained. See, Jeremiah was already ordained. He said, before you were born, I had your destiny. God. See, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. So why are you worried when I got a plan? God help us here. All you have to do is fix yourself on the prize. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. And walk in my destiny. Turn here and say your destiny is already unfold. And your destiny. And your destiny. Is not only unfold. But it's told. God help us. The story about Jeremiah was an unfold destiny and a told destiny. I call you this day to tear down, to break up, to destroy, to throw down, then to build, and to plan again. You have a destiny. Someone say, I got a destiny. Matter of fact, tell it, serve no, say, devil, you better watch out, because I have a destiny. You got to think on these things. Now, where did God want me to go? Now, understand here, remember here that when you are called by God, there's a journey you're going to go on. Now, that's what scares a lot of people. You know, when I was on years ago, now, I don't like these, I don't like the cyclone. Now, how many like some wild rides? Raise your hand. You could handle that. Wild ride. Okay. But how many don't like wild rides? Let me see. You don't know, remember the cyclone in, 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 in Coney Island? My family, I was a little kid, I must have been about maybe 10, 12 years old, and my brother and sister, I told them, I, I'm scared, I can't go on. So they said, don't worry, we'll, we'll hold you tight. And they put me on that cyclone. And man, was I scared. I mean, that thing went up, and I saw that thing giving it come there, because you know, it goes up slow. Yeah. And then you say, okay, get ready for this. <laughs> and that's how the devil operates sometimes. He says, you know what, but at the end of the day, I'm off the ride. See, sometimes the devil takes you through a cyclone. We say, if you go that way, you're going to wish you never. No, no. You have to go through the ride sometime and come out all right. Amen. And you'll recognize it wasn't bad as I thought. Amen. Because what you're going through, somebody else have a tougher trial. They got the new rides out now that go real high and real low. Out in these different parks over in Jersey somewhere. You know them different rides here. They got the new rides. Cyclones is looking weak now. So sometimes your trial will look weak when you say, I've been through that already. So that can't bother me. I lost a job before, but I'm going to get another, a new job. I, I knew it is not to have an apartment. I got a new apartment coming. You know, you got to think that some of your trials is something to bring you to new things that's going to take place and you go overcome them quickly, quickly. All right, let's look here. Now the Bible says here, and the Lord spake to Moses and said, send thou men. That they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Now I want you to see here that the Lord had said, I'm giving this to them. You ain't got to work for it. You don't have to even pray about it. I'm giving it to you. They miss that word. Sometimes we're fighting and here they, they got caught in the cycle. So God said here, when I give you something, let me hear your testimony. How are you going to tell how you got over they didn't have a testimony. No, they, they had, you know, I'm going to bring it a little short in this, this, uh, this uh, episode here. That they came back 10 with a bad report. Yeah. Let's go read the bad report they talked about. All right, it goes over to say in verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. Mm -hmm. The cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And I was talking about here that, you know, remember here I talked about the Hittite spirit and the Perizzite. And the Perizzite spirit was the wall city. And the wall city, anything that builds walls, what happens, keeps you from going over. And that's why in the church you know how to tear down strongholds, which are walls. Tear down strongholds, things that, see, now I want you to start saying 
Things that you thought you never could have, say it, you can have them. Say this to yourself. Whatever I could not have, I will say I can have it. Well, I'll never have a house. Who said you won't have a house? You said it. Not God. You said it. Amen. Well, I'll never drive a car. You said you won't drive. God said, I got a car for you. Matter of fact, not one, but two cars. But if you keep saying something, you will actually live in what you say. As a man, think. I'll never get married. You said you won't get married. God has someone waiting at the restaurant right for you right now. I'm talking about that McDonald's. <laughs> While you're getting a good meal, God has a good, a good person waiting for you. While you're getting a happy meal, God has someone to make you more happier. With a toy with it. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> so, watch this here. Let's go further. But I want you to see here, you got to think. Now, they said, nevertheless, we saw giants. Understand the point. You may see giants, but you got to become a giant giant yourself. You got to see giants. Giants are real. You know, David saw a giant. But as little as David was, he became a giant over the giant. He walked into that place fearlessly. And I'm going to tell you about giants. When you're fighting giants, people will laugh at you saying, what is this little ruddy dude coming up here with a slingshot? And here's a man got a sword taller than him. Y'all didn't know how tall David Swart, uh, De uh, Delilah Swart was. He was very tall. was taller than David. Because he was nine feet and he had to have a heavy sword. Matter of fact, they said sometimes they would have two men to carry a sword. It was so heavy. Can you imagine that big, serene atmosphere? They're just looking, everyone's laughing. And they said, where's the man that's going to fight David? And he's on the back saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That's the fallen army of God. And they say, who's this back, this back here yelling all that voice? Do you don't know Goliath and the Goliath brothers? They don't know who they're messing with. So David comes out, and everybody's laughing at him. You know why? Because the morning, he's a short little ruddy dude. The second thing is, they said, where's your warfare armor? Where, where are you going to fight with? And he goes in his back pocket and pulls out a, a stick, looking like a Y, and a rubber band in the patch, and five rocks in a sack. And they're laughing at him. And it, it, the whole crowd is roaring, laughing, and laughing. And then his, Goliath comes strong. But as a man thinketh, David said, I think I could take him down. I think I could destroy this giant. I think this giant need to come on down because he's the founder of the army of God. As a man, th he didn't see himself as a midget. He saw him as a giant. And let me tell you something. Things can be small, but think them big in your life. Amen. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Amen. That husband that's not saved, he will be saved one day. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Yes. I see your wine bottle turn to a communion table. Uh -huh. Y'all got quiet. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. So you got to think different. Your children run the street. You're going to be saved one day. I don't care where you're going. You can hang out with all the fellas you want. You will be saved and sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Fire baptized because Jesus is going to be on your mind. So you got to see it. You got to see your family. If the man, Bishop, I don't even want to go home. It's so much confusion. See your family being at peace. Speak into the atmosphere. There's going to be peace in this house. Demons of confusion leave in Jesus' name. See, because remember here, demons need to hear your voice that you know somebody. Y'all got quiet. Don't get quiet. Yell. Sickness in your house. Sickness, y'all got to leave this house. I'm tired of waking up feeling sick. I'm tired of this. My cousin's sick, and he lives there, and my sister's sick. She lives there. Everybody said, no, the devil's like, we ain't receiving sickness no more. The spirit of confirm. Remember here. The Bible talks about a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. Notice it didn't say infirmity. It said a spirit of infirmity, which tells me remove the spirit and there's no more infirmity. See how simple that is? Remove the spirit of infirmity and there's no more infirmity. 
That's why the man who had legions of devils, he's a lunatic. It was a spirit that made him lunatic. You remove the spirit and he has his right mind. Come on here. Remove depression, you'll be impressed. Come on, somebody. You, you remove poverty, you become rich. Am I speaking right? You remove the negative, you become positive. There's a wall that's in our way that we need to break down. That's why we got to be transformed, transform the renewing of your mind. Amen. Somebody say, I'm transformed today. So now they said here, and, and they're saying something that God can't work with. Now notice here, God cannot work with the negative report. Because you know why? Ask me why. You take away his glory. You're putting a limit on the Holy One of Israel. When you say you cannot do something, then you take away his glory. What did Jesus do? When he went to Jairus' house, and he went to, um, and they said, trouble the master no longer, your daughter's dead. So now Jesus goes to the house and says, the damsel is not dead, she's asleep. But they laughed him to scorn. You ever notice that people laugh at you when you're trying to do something great for God? They laughed him to scorn. What did Jesus do? Have a party with them? Say, take a seat here? He did what? He put them out. Because they were the wall that was blocking life in that girl. Had he let them negative spirits stay there, the girl would have stayed dead and they really left at him. But he put them out except those he asked to follow, that was his disciples, and then his mama and daddy. They believed in the Lord. Let me say something now. In this season, some of you have to get around from unbelievers because they're blocking your blessing. They're blocking the door that God wants to open. You trying to swing that door open, they got the foot there holding that door. You got to remove them. Amen, somebody. Notice here again, uh, let's go further here, where he said now, um, the children of Anak was there, and there were giants in the land. They were afraid, right? But then it says in verse 30, and Caleb still the people and said before Moses, let us go up at once. Which signifies unity. Let us go up at once. Let us go up together. How can two walk together except they be agreed? He said, and let's possess it. Now here's a positive confession. For we are well able to overcome it. You got that? Verse 30? That's verse 30. We are well able to overcome it. Let us go up at once and possess it. God help us here. We got, there, there's some things that God wants you to possess, but you're going to have to get someone is in agreement with you and then possess what you want from God. Hallelujah. That's how I'm feeling now. Amen. While I'm just preaching, I just feel, amen, uh, my spiritual son, uh, Pastor Richard, I feel that you're going to possess the church you need to get. You're going to get it. I'm telling you, mark it down. You're going to walk in there and say, this is the place, and God's going to release it. You know why? Because we are well able to overcome anything that's blocking it. Anyone, I, I like what um, uh, Pastor Joel Olsen said one time, he said, you know, when he was trying to get the, um, the center, what is that? I forget what they call it. Anyone know the center? The, 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 say it louder. Compact. Compact center, right? So now what happened is um, the, 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 the politician said, no, no, we, ain't, we can't sign them off like that. This, 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 this. There was a big thing. And him and his wife prayed, and the church prayed. And guess what? Before you know it, there was, he said everything was going through except one person was blocking it. That was the Goliath. You ever get to somewhere and there's one person that won't, won't agree, one person won't do, and you just can't get the job done. And when they prayed, God softened the heart of that Goliath. And they said, sign the contract. Today he's in the complex center having a wonderful time in church. Yeah. See? Somebody say, there's nothing impossible, there's nothing impossible. if my mind believes. Believe. Takes your mindset, see? It's not where you are, it's where your mind is at. Because you can be in a bad predicament, but your mind will bring you out. Your body will, and guess what? Your body's going to follow your mind. 
Y'all got that? You could be in a bad predicament. Bills everywhere. Finance not flowing. But your mind can dig you out of that dung hole. Amen. All of a sudden, you thinking different. Why do you think today all these young folk are becoming millionaires at 25 and 26? What, how do you know why they're thinking, I can do this? Let me get a little program. Let me get makeup. Let me get eyelashes. Let me get, come on, a frog leg. Do something. But guess what? And everybody's attracting to them and buying their product. Let me tell you, well, number one, the truth is they believe in themselves. They believe in their product. And all of a sudden, you see everyone got this new idea. Look how many new ideas came out of this thing where, where people got their own little thing going, and they're making money. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. They even got rat traps making money. Amen. Showing you how to catch a rat. Amen. So you might need that for your home to catch that man. And get him out. So let me go further. Watch this. So now, go, in, in closing here, I want you to see here, we must change our mindset. The reason why I said it because your mind, amen, is a, and they say in scientists, your mind is plastic. And your mind can be molded and changed. That's why the Lord said here, and they found, this is why the, the scientists found that much of the Bible really gives scientific evidence. Scientific and it's about trying to, well, we got to prove something first, then the Bible second is the Bible first. And they find out through our scientific evidence, it comes from the Bible. So now we don't understand how this neurological mind can be changed and transformed. And, 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 and things that we say that cannot be done, it can change again. See, that's why I want you to see this here. I want everyone to think today that greatest he that's within me. Than he that's within the world. Let me tell you something. I want you to hear this carefully. There is a God giant in you that need to awaken. My God. There's a God. I mean, this. See, I'm going to tell you why. Ask me why. Because God said, I created you in my image after my likeness. Now, if God created you in his image, what cannot God do? Wait, 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 wait. Is not he the creator and he made creatures and creation? Look at this create that God put in us. That's why he said, now I made you. Now you be fruitful and multiply. Now I'm going to tell you another secret how to get blessing God. Number one, you must be broken. Someone said, I got to be broken. If you're not broken, then you cannot produce. What do you mean by that? Well, if you take a seed, and I'm going to take two seeds. I got two seeds in my hand. One seed, I put it on the shelf. The other seed, I put in the ground. Which one's going to be broken? The one in the ground. Which one's going to bear a, a harvest? See, if you keep staying where you are mm, and refuse to go down to be broken, you'll never produce the harvest. You got to go down deeper in your knees in prayer, seeking God, talking to God. You got to bury yourself in the face of God, and then you'll bring forth a harvest because now the seed is broken. It is germinating and bringing forth life. Y'all got that? Certainly, it is my time to bury myself in prayer, supplications, reading talking to God and laying before him. See, and you know what's going to happen? You're going to start birthing things. Every tree becomes strong and gives off another seed to go back into the ground. You got to get birth, you got to birth these things. Listen, if a woman don't lay her body down, she can't give birth to her baby. You, I, how many know you don't get pregnant by running? You got to lay down your life. Amen. A woman, and I'm, and I'm not trying to be rude when I say, but a, man, a, um, a woman cannot produce a child without the seed of a man. If a man is stingy, you'll have no generation. 
And when you start planting a tree seed, you're going to have a tree, a harvest of trees. You got to learn how to plant that. Amen, somebody. Now, on the same point, and somebody said, well, I'm going to do, it. I'm gonna do what I've been doing. It, it, if you keep doing what you want to do, you always have one tree. And when that tree gets old and torn up, it won't produce nothing else. But when you start planting, I'm saying, I'm going to be wise, rise early, and start planting those new, new fruit and back in the ground and get some more trees and more trees and more trees. That's why God said in his word, pray, seek him, work while it is day. Because the word day means life. When night cometh death, no man can work. And we have to understand, so while you got life, start moving. While your mind is thinking good, come on, keep that mind going. Get some new ideas. Matter of fact, bring somebody to the church next Sunday. Talk into their life. Amen. You, God gave you a new life, now change their life. Oh, God quiet here. Amen. And here, what I like about, amen, the 12 spy, two stood up. And sometimes the majority will not win. You know what I'm saying? The majority win? Well, here's two men who won without the majority. Isn't it how funny how God chooses things to make things happen? Everybody said, well, you know, it ain't going to happen this way because, you know, um, you know you, you, you too old to start driving. I, I'll never forget, when I was getting my associate degree, there was a, a lady in my class. She was 65 years old getting her associate degree, too. Come on here. There was on the news some time ago, this woman was 108 and just got her diploma. And some of you 16 and 15 and 19, you ain't got your GED. You better go to that woman that's 108. Let her be your teacher. Come on, somebody. You can do all things if you put your mind to it. Amen, somebody. You can, you can do anything you put your mind to. You say you'll never drive, you can get behind that wheel and start driving. Amen, somebody. I tell you, my sister years ago, she went to the South, and she said, well, I'm not going to drive cars, because she had a little small accident in, in, um, in right over here. Sister Sylvia had a, and she, when she went down South, she found out, you better drive. Come on here. Because if you ain't got no food in that house, and there's about 14 miles to go to the 7-Eleven, come on, talk to me. You wake up and drive. Amen. She turned around, she called me one day, said, Greg, I got my car. I said, well, you ain't got a car. You can't even drive. She said, I've been driving. Hello here. Amen. So watch this here. In closing, I want you to see here that somebody say, say this here. Today, Today I, choose life. I choose life. Before me, Before me is life and, death, life and death, but I choose life, I choose life. that I may live I in Jesus' name. Jesus. Give God a praise, everyone. <laughs> choose ye this day whom you may serve. Let us all stand to our feet today. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we close our broadcast, we'd like to give those an opportunity that have not accepted Christ as your Savior to do so on today. It's a simple prayer taken from the scriptures, Romans 10 and 9. And for those of you who would like to receive Christ in your life today, just repeat after me. Say, Dear God, come into my heart. I do believe that Christ died and rose again to give me a new life. I receive him in my heart today as Lord and Savior to reign and rule in my life now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So glad that you were able to join us on today. We really hope that this word has resonated with you and that you come back next week to enjoy another word or watch online with a friend as well. And again, make sure that you are sharing this link with someone that you feel like needs to hear it. We'll see you next week.